Today we're going to be talking about how to use the binomial series to expand a given function as a power series, and then we're going to find the associated radius of convergence of the power series that we find. So as a reminder, I've written the formula for the binomial series. The problem that we're going to be doing in this particular video is the fourth root of 1 minus x. Now, we can rewrite this function here, the fourth root of 1 minus x, to be the quantity 1 minus x raised to the 1 fourth power. The reason that we want to rewrite it like that is because rewriting it this way makes it look a lot more similar to the form of the binomial series, this quantity 1 plus x raised to the k. Now the binomial series is just a particular kind of power series, and in this problem it's going to help us find a power series representation of this quantity 1 minus x raised to the 1 fourth power. What we want to notice first is that the format of our problem is similar to this binomial series format here. We have a value for k of 1 fourth here. We also have this value here for x. We have positive x in our binomial series, but in our problem we have this negative x. So we're going to have to do a couple things. We want to adapt this binomial series to fit our problem here, the 1 minus x raised to the 1 fourth power. So what we're going to do is say that this is equal to, our problem is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. We saw that k was equal to 1 fourth because we compared it to this original binomial series here. So we're going to say k is equal to 1 fourth. We're going to leave n as it is. And we're going to replace x with negative x because in our problem we have this negative x value instead of positive x. So we're going to replace that x here with negative x. Because we replaced k with 1 fourth and x with negative x, we want to do that on the right hand side over here where we've listed out the first several terms of the binomial series. So our new binomial series is going to be 1 plus, here we're going to plug in 1 fourth everywhere where we have k, so we're going to have 1 fourth, we're going to plug in negative x everywhere where we have x, so 1 fourth times negative x, plus here we'll get 1 fourth times 1 fourth minus 1, all divided by 2 factorial, we're going to multiply by quantity negative x squared. For our third term, we'll say plus 1 fourth, we'll plug in 1 fourth for k right here. So 1 fourth times 1 fourth minus 1 times 1 fourth minus 2, all divided by 3 factorial. And we're going to end up multiplying that by quantity negative x cubed. So we're multiplying by negative x cubed because we have this x cubed value here. So those are just the first several terms of the series. We want to go ahead and simplify these first several terms so we can start to more clearly see a pattern. When we recognize that pattern, then we can represent it as a power series. So if we start simplifying, we'll come back over here. We have 1 for our first term. Then we have plus 1 fourth times a negative x. That's a minus 1 fourth x. For our third term we have plus 1 fourth times 1 fourth minus 1. 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. If we pull out that negative sign we'll get minus 1 fourth times 3 fourths all divided by 2 factorial. Our quantity negative x squared because it's squared the negative is going to go away and we're just going to be left with x squared here. For our third term we have 1 fourth minus 1, which is negative 3 fourths here. We have 1 fourth minus 2, which is negative 7 fourths, like this. These two negative signs here are going to cancel and become positive signs when we multiply them together. But remember, this term is multiplied by quantity negative x cubed, which is going to give us a negative value. So if we pull that negative out in front, we're going to get negative 1 fourth times 3 fourths times 7 fourths all divided by 3 factorial times x cubed. If we keep going with one more term, we can see here the pattern that we have. We're going to have a negative value for every term except our first term, which is a positive 1. So we're going to get negative. It's always going to start with 1 fourth, then 3 fourths. So we're going to have 1 fourth, then 3 fourths, then 7 fourths. And then because it's our fourth term here, we're going to have to add a fourth term to the numerator, which is going to be 11 fourths because we add 4 to the numerator of each of these fractions each time. 
3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, so we get that 11 fourths up there. We're going to divide that by 4 factorial and multiply it by x to the 4. And if we had kept plugging in values of k here, 1 fourth, and negative x for x, we would find that this was in fact our fourth term, so we can say minus and then dot dot dot. Now before we write our power series representation, we can simplify one more thing. We can bring all of the fours in the denominator of these fractions here that are in the numerator of each term down into the denominator. So we'll end up with one minus one fourth x. And now we can bring both fours here into the denominator. So our numerator is just gonna be one times three. Our denominator is four times four times two factorial x squared. Same thing here, we'll end up with one times three times seven divided by four times four times four times three factorial x cubed and then minus one times three times seven times 11 divided by four times four times four times four times four factorial x to the fourth like this minus and then dot dot dot. This is simplified as much as we can really get it. It's time to write our power series representation of these terms. We're looking for a representation of the a sub nth term. The pattern is really easiest to pick out starting with this term right here. That's where they start to look similar. Remember that we got this term from plugging in n equals zero. This one was n equals one. This one was n equals two. So we really wanna start our power series representation with n equals two because that's where the pattern is easy to see. So what we're gonna say is that this is equal to one minus one fourth x. We're gonna pull those two out in front minus, now we have the sum from n equals two because we're starting with this term n equals two to infinity. And here's where we need to find our representation. So one thing we can say is that we don't really need to include these values here of one because they're redundant. So this first term is really just a three in the numerator, then three times seven, then three times seven times 11. The next term would be three times seven times 11 times 15 when we add four to 11. So the way that we're gonna represent that, we're just gonna say three times seven times 11 times, and then we can say dot, dot, dot. That's how we're gonna represent that increasing product there but we need to define what that last value in the product is gonna be. For example, in this term here for n equals two, the last value in this multiplication product here is three. The last value in this term is seven. The last value in this term is 11. We need to identify that. Well, what relationship does that last value have to n? If this is the n equals two term, this is the n equals three term, this is n equals four, if this is the n equals two term, and the last value in this product here is three, we could say, well, that's n plus one. Well, does that follow for this value here of seven? No, it would have to be four, but it's seven, so that doesn't work. What if we multiply n by two and then add or subtract something to it? Well, if we take two n, then we get four, we get two times two, which is four. So maybe the last value is two n minus one because four minus one would give us three. Well, let's test that on our n equals three term. If we do two n minus one, we would get two times three, which would be six minus one, which would be five. That doesn't quite get us there either. What about three n and then some addition or subtraction? Well, if we do three n, three times two would give us six. We'd have to subtract three to get back to three, so maybe it's three n minus three. Well, if we come over here to this term, the n equals three term, let's apply three n minus three. We would get three times three, which is nine, minus three, which would give us six. Doesn't quite work either. The first time we're gonna have success is when we try four n. So if we do four n, we'll do four times two, which is eight. We'd have to subtract five to get back to three. So if we test four n minus five, four n minus five would be four times two, which is eight minus five, which is three. If we test it on this n equals three term, we get four times three, which is 12 minus five, which is seven, and that works. If we test it on this term, we get four times four, which is 16 minus five is 11. So we can see that that's working. So what we're gonna say is that this product is three times seven times 11 times dot, 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 all the way up to four n minus five, which will be the last value in this product that we find in the numerator. So we've got four n minus five, now you can see we've got x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth on the n equals two, n equals three, n equals four terms respectively. So we can see clearly that that's gonna be x to the n value there. 
Now what about the denominator? Well, in the denominator, clearly we have this two factorial when we're dealing with the n equals two term, three factorial when we're dealing with the n equals three term. We're gonna have n factorial to represent that in the denominator, n factorial. The only thing now we haven't dealt with are these fours here in the denominator. Well, you can see here for the n equals two term, we have two fours. For the n equals three term, we have three fours. For the n equals four term, we have these four fours right here. So what we can say is that we're gonna have four raised to the n power, four squared, four cubed, four to the fourth, et cetera. So four raised to the n power times n factorial is our denominator. What that tells us is that our power series representation, a sub n, is just this series right here. We can say that this is equal to a sub n, that's our series. Now that we have a representation of the a sub n term or our power series representation, all we need to do is find radius of convergence. And we know that we're gonna do that using the ratio test, which remember tells us that L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. So all we wanna do there is plug in n plus one everywhere where we have n into our original series here. We're gonna say this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. We're gonna plug in n plus one everywhere we have n in our representation here. That's gonna give us the value a sub n plus one. So we're gonna get three times seven times 11 times dot 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 all the way. Here when we plug in n plus one, we'll get four times n plus one minus five, which is gonna give us four n plus four minus five, which is gonna be equal to four n minus one. So we're gonna get four n minus one here. We're gonna divide that by four to the n plus one times n plus one factorial times x to the n plus one, which we'll move to the numerator like that. So that's a sub n plus one. Now we're gonna divide that by a sub n. We're gonna divide by just our original a sub n value that we found here. But instead of dividing by this fraction, we can just go ahead and skip right to the next step where we multiply by its reciprocal. And that's just an algebraic manipulation. We flip it upside down so we can multiply instead of divide. So we'll multiply here by four n times n factorial all divided by, this is gonna be absolute value here, all divided by three times seven times 11 times dot dot dot, four n minus five times x to the n power, like that. So that's how we set up our ratio test to find the radius of convergence. We just need to start simplifying this limit as much as we can. And to do that, we're just gonna compare terms with like bases. First thing we wanna do, we can see that we're gonna have three times seven times 11 times dot, dot, dot. That's gonna cancel with this. Three times seven times 11 times dot, dot, dot. That's gonna go away. Now, again, if we look at terms with like bases, the first thing we have here is x raised to the n plus one in the numerator divided by x raised to the n in the denominator. In order to simplify that, we just subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So we get n plus one minus n. In that case, the n's cancel and we're just left with one. So we have x to the first power in our numerator left over. So limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. This four n minus one here is gonna stay. That can't cancel with anything. We're gonna be left with x to the first power in our numerator. Let's deal with the four to the n here. We've got four to the n and a like base here, four to the n plus one in the denominator. When we say n minus the quantity n plus one, we're gonna be left with four to the negative one, which means we have four to the positive one here in our denominator left over. For n factorial and quantity n plus one factorial, we just wanna write out the first few terms. Remember that factorial, if we have, for example, four factorial, then that's gonna be equal to four times three times two times one, or in other words, four times four minus one times four minus two times four minus three, etc. Here we can do the same thing. So n factorial, we're gonna get n times n minus one times n minus two, dot, 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 like this in our numerator. In our denominator, we start with n plus one, so we get n plus one, 
When we subtract one from that, we get n plus one minus one, or just n, so multiplied by n times, and now you start to see the pattern, n minus one, n minus two, dot, 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 like that. There's our simplified limit, except that now we can cancel here n, n minus one, n minus two, with n, n minus one, n minus two, and every term after that in this factorial sequence here is also gonna cancel, leaving us just with this n plus one value. So now we can say that our simplified limit is the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of quantity 4n minus 1 times x, all divided by 4 times n plus 1, like this. Because the limit only affects values involving n, right, we're saying n goes to infinity, we can pull out this value of x here. We pull it out in front of the limit. We need to make sure we keep it inside the absolute value bracket. So we say the absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 4n minus 1 divided by, and now here if we distribute this 4 across the n plus 1 here, we'll get 4n plus 4, like this. If we take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, we can see that the limit is just going to be 1. We look at the coefficients here on our highest degree n terms. We have 4 over 4 or just 1. So this whole value, limit as n goes to infinity of this thing, it just becomes 1. So we can say that that's equal to 1. And therefore, we started here with capital L, right? L is equal to the absolute value of x. The reason this is useful is because ratio test tells us that whatever value we find for L, if we take that value, so we'll say absolute value of x, and we set that less than one, then this is where the series converges. Because we only have this x value over here, we don't have to do anything. Knowing this, we can say that the radius of convergence is equal to this value over here, which is one. Sometimes you end up with something like, you know, L is equal to x squared or the absolute value of x squared or something like that. You need to make sure that you solve for something in the form of just x or x minus a. So if you have absolute value of x minus a and a is some constant, and you set that less than one, you can leave it in that form and say that this value here, one, is the radius of convergence, but you can't leave it in the form, you know, some value x squared over here on the left-hand side. But because we just have here the absolute value of x, or essentially the absolute value of x minus zero, less than one, we can say that the radius of convergence is r equals one. So that's how you can use the binomial series to find a power series representation of a function and its associated radius of convergence.